Hey, welcome to Blending Light Bosses. We're the trailers. Blended families don't come with instructions, but we can help you make a plan so you can blend like bosses too. Blending Like Bosses. We're Scott and Michelle Trailer, and we are a blended family of eight. Wow. And the reason we did this show is because we felt that blended families really needed a resource. Uh, blended families come from pulling two families together, and it comes from a place that is really tough. There's been mm -hmm. a lot of loss, a lot of hurt, mm -hmm. and um, it doesn't just happen overnight, and it doesn't just happen. Uh, you need a plan and you need to work at it in order to be able to blend like bosses. Yes. And we believe that there is hope. There's so absolute hope. Whatever your blending situation, whether you have kids all the time, whether you have kids in and out of your home, there is hope. And we believe that God has given us hope in our families. Right. So like any good love story begins, I thought it would be appropriate to share with you how we met. Yes. How did we meet in this crazy, crazy world? with all these kids and all this um, nonsense, as you will see in weeks right. to come. Well, truth be told, we met on Match.com. We did. Not sponsored, right. but I hopped online after going through something with a friend who lost her husband and just realizing that after coming out of a divorce and a really, really toxic, difficult situation that I do deserve love and I, I did deserve love and that um, I was finally willing to try it again. And so I hopped on there thinking it was a different site. So that in itself was kind of a weird coincidence. And lo and behold, guess who was on there? Yeah, and I had no plans really to be on there until a friend of mine kind of strong armed me to put a profile on there. And, um, and then once I got into it, I got into it, posted some pictures. And come to find out, when we met each, when we kind of saw each other online, um, she was the one that reached out to me. Okay, why do we have to make that a point? <laughs> it's important. And, uh, but what was really interesting is that all of a sudden there were all these connectors that we didn't even realize. Uh, we actually went to the same school in Virginia. We live in Buffalo, New York now. Mm -hmm. And we're at the same place in Virginia for a year or two, didn't even know it. And then crazier things happened around how people we knew, mm -hmm. I knew somebody that's and her um, um, family now by marriage and all kinds of crazy stuff. So absolutely a God thing. So then that proved to me that I wasn't being catfished. So that <laughs> helped me like, you know, let my guard down. Cause there's some, there's some weird stuff, you know, that happens online, but um, it was cool how very soon, like we had all those confirmations. Right, for sure. <laughs> It was meant to be. It was. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I thought we would introduce our kids next um, to you. So you might not be able to keep track of them all. That's okay. We can't either. So <laughs> just call out a name. See who comes to dinner. If I bake cookies, they smell it, they come. Doesn't matter. Whatever your name is, right. come on in. That's right. All right, so let's start with the oldest, Channing. Oldest, youngest, Channing. So you have um, four biological kids. Right. I have four boys mm -hmm. that are that are um, biological to me. Okay, then... I have two biological kids and the only girl. In the, right. in the family. Five boys, one girl. Yeah. Um, she's going to be well protected when she gets to dating age. So um, we're going to make sure of it. That's good. Uh, so Channing, he's uh, 19. He is uh, one year out of uh, out of high school. Um, he is a type A personality, yes. hard worker, uh, high level of energy, um, likes doing online videos, things like that. So uh, he's our oldest. And then Brayden. Braden, um, he's 17, senior in high school, um, and is super chill dude. Just uh, he just he doesn't want to be stressed out. Um, he is our uh, he loves to write and produce hip hop music, mm -hmm. and his, his version of that is kind of the chill, kind of smooth beat to it. So mm -hmm. cool dude. Yeah, his stage name is Betrayal. If Betrayal. You look, if you want to look that up, because it's like B for Braden and then Trail like for trailer. Right. Um, and I will say he's a very loyal one in the yes. in the pack. Yes. He really is. 
he will be your friend till the end. Right. Next we have Silas. He's 12. Um, and he's in seventh grade. And he's kind of our logical, literal one. He's very intelligent. Not that they're all that intelligent, but he has an affinity towards the maths and the sciences. Um, very compassionate heart. Mm -hmm. um, loves gaming. I mean, what middle school boy doesn't love video games? Right. <laughs> then we have Grayson. Grayson. He's in fifth grade, uh, is 11. And um, he is very witty um, and loves to draw. Um, he's kind of known in his, like, in his grade for doing good drawings mm -hmm. and very principled. When yeah. he thinks he's right, he is willing to go to the death to make sure that you know he's right, <laughs> even though he might not be right. <laughs> That's a whole separate thing. We'll get right. to that down yes. the road. Um, next is Sophia. She's also 11. So they are how many days apart? Two weeks apart. Hey, two weeks apart. They know the days, probably the hours, um, you know, who's older and all of that. Um, but Sophia is kind of our eternal optimist. I used to joke because she would do cartwheels into the room and out of the room, like when we first um, yes. when we first moved here. Um, but she is pretty much everyone's best friend. Right. Um, is always talking about her best friends in school and loves singing and dancing. Yes. <laughs> She's nice. actually pretty talented at singing. I'm not yeah. gonna lie. Yeah. I have a musical background, and I think she is. Yeah. She can pick it up like that. Oh, right. She memorizes a song like that. So good with words. And then Jackson. Jackson. He's the youngest one of the group. He's nine. He is in fourth grade. He gets the benefit of seeing everybody ab uh, above him go through all their stuff. Yeah. So he tends to be the one that is the most steady mm -hmm. um, and just always has a good attitude. He just very rarely ever has a bad day. Mm -hmm. And when you know he's had a bad day, there's something wrong, mm -hmm. right? Um, but then he also... He loves sports. He wants to play football this fall. Um, he kind of has a build for it, so he's mm -hmm. looking forward to that. Super excited. Keeps practicing whenever he has a chance. A little hard right now because we have a lot of snow outside. We but, do. Yeah. yeah. And those are those are the trailers. Yeah. Those are the Stockton trailers, and so we're so proud of all these kids. Yeah. They're good. They're really good. Yeah. So what do we do? Let's tell them about what we're we're up to uh, for our careers and our jobs because we don't sit around making videos. Right. Uh, <laughs> hopefully one day. Maybe that would be great. Um, <laughs> I'm a manager at a at an online uh, college. Uh, I've been doing that uh, here at this existing place for about 14 years. I've been in higher ed for almost about 20 years. Mm -hmm. um, I love what I do. Never thought I'd be living in Buffalo. I thought I'd be a youth pastor somewhere, but uh, I get to pastor about 240 um, employees now that I, that I'm responsible for. So. Different way of doing it, but certainly wouldn't change it and love what I do. Yeah, but you do get to use your youth ministry degree. Absolutely. At church. Oh, yeah. I guess. he's one of my best volunteers. <laughs> She's my boss. Um, <laughs> I and another uh, friend of ours uh, leads our middle school ministry yeah. on Sunday mornings. Yeah. So I, get, I do get to use that. It's more recent, and I'm having a really fun time doing that. Yes, I married a middle schooler <laughs> in a grown body. Um, so I um, am in vocational ministry, so I'm part-time, and I've had a lot of different um, roles over the years, but I've been at Renovation Church for over a decade. Is it coming up on 11 and a half? Yeah, Somewhere half. around like 11-ish yeah. years. Was in education and some other uh, church ministry before that. Mm -hmm. I know I don't look that old. I always, you know, make sure to clarify that 22. with people. I don't look like I could have two lifetimes, you know. Okay. Um, but right now, um, I am overseeing our family ministry and get to deal with a lot of kids mm -hmm. and adults and, oh my gosh, just really encourage and help families and help them to know and love Jesus, and it's awesome. Mm -hmm. And that's how we get to work together on Sundays. Yeah, it's a little, great. A little, a little bit of a capacity there. So, how do we manage all of this busy <laughs> stuff? Because oh, we don't goodness. just go to work and then... The kids just raise themselves. Right. Because that would be too easy. Right. But if you figured out a way, yeah, let us call know. us. <laughs> Have your people call yeah, our people. Right. Um, so <laughs> let's unpack kind of what a typical week looks like of kind of how our family landscape is right now. Yeah. I, I would say we start with, with Monday because that's kind of the uh, easiest way for me to do it. Okay. But um, I guess first of all, our kids go to public school. So... Mm -hmm. You know, I go, I, I work Monday through Friday, you know, I'm gone probably about 7 in the morning, 7.30 until 5.30 in the afternoon. And then um, the kids are leaving the house around uh, anywhere from 6.45 in the morning. Well, to, we hope they leave. We hope yeah, they make the bus. Right. Um, we almost had an issue with that the other day, but anyways. Um, 
Uh, they're, they're leaving sometime between 6.45, 8 o'clock, and they're back home around, I don't know, 3, 4 o'clock, depending on who's mm -hmm. getting off the bus and when. Mm -hmm. um, and then at after school, we have a kind of a homework routine, and they get to have you know some free time after they work on their homework. We really, really try hard to eat dinner together. Right. Every night, that's possible. It's important though that homework piece. They do that the first day they walk in. They can have a snack when they're doing that, but they can't do anything else so that homework is done. Correct. And did not do that with my older kids. Wish I did. So. Tip for the for those of you that got the younger ones. Tip of the Stay day. On top of that. Okay, and after dinner they have a little bit of free time, and um, I don't know, go to bed around eight nine o'clock. Right. We try to pretty much keep a routine, but we've got some other things happening different days of the week, so we when try we, to. Yeah, and when we can, we try the bedtime routines. We try to get them talking a little bit um, about their day, uh, do a quick little prayer time. Mm -hmm. If we're mm -hmm. feeling, you know. Yeah. Extra, I'm gonna throw out a question. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes this guys just get up to bed, it's time to go to bed. Close your eyes. Yeah. <laughs> go to sleep. Right. All right. Um, evening activities right now in this season, because we don't always do like sports. We try so hard not to be out every single night of the week. It's just too much. Right. So we have our, uh, the kids can select to do one sport a year. Mm -hmm. um, and so a uh, good example is that Jackson decided not to do lacrosse. So he could do football. He really wanted mm -hmm. to do football. And right now we've had Grayson and Sophia out on Monday nights. And so we get home, yeah. we eat real quick, and then you and I are going two separate ways for yeah. you know an hour and a half and then coming back. So, yeah. Yeah. You know, Silas, we talked about how he's more into like maths and sciences and gaming and all that. So he mm -hmm. um, he's tried his hand at a couple sports, but his he's not super into that. He's When he does do sports, it's more individual sports and individual competition. He is very intrinsically motivated in that way, but like his deal right now is he's in besides the middle school um, environment at our the church. church right. He's in another youth group, so we're saying, okay, if you're not going to do a sport, you still need that community. So, right. and then yep. that's another night this week. But that's kind of where we're capping it right now. Right. And then we'll have time where in the fall uh, somebody else will take a turn. Jackson will take a turn and, right. and do that because. Yep. It's too much, guys. Yeah. You can't be. You got you to play. Yeah, you gotta, can't be doing you, all the things right. all the time. So, right. um, then Saturday mornings are kind of our days to kind of get stuff done around the house. Right. So they the the they have chores they got to do, and there's a little allowance. And we've actually been really good with um, doing that every Saturday. Uh, you know, it we use that money. Uh, it's like five dollars a week, six dollars a week, depending yeah. on how old they are. Um, and they use that to, if they want to, if we're out somewhere to buy a snack, um, if they want, if they want to buy something on a video game, either on, you know, an Apple device or mm -hmm. on a gaming system, um, they use all that stuff or go to Target, they want something, they got to save their money up. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. It helps them like have a little bit of currency in there. Right. Sometimes we do bribe and snacks and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna deny that. Mm -hmm. I made up these snack passes. And sometimes I hand them out for free and they can have an extra snack if they did an extra job. Right. <laughs> Maybe sometime we'll talk about how we do those chores. Right. Because I try to keep, be it, keep, it, uh, keep it motivated for them. And sometimes they just want the money, let's be honest. Right. So they say the night before, I'm doing chores tomorrow. Or when we came back from a recent vacation, Grayson was like, I'm doing chores tomorrow. We're like, oh my gosh, we're, like, we're just getting back. No, you're not. You're not doing chores tomorrow. But he wanted that money so bad right. that he was like going to force chores upon That's us. That's right. See? He was so principled. Right, he was principled. <laughs> um, and then, anything else from Sunday? Our groceries. That's our oh, big day Saturday, yes. to get groceries and to fill up the cupboards yep. and all that. And the so, kids help with so that. They help uh, get the groceries in the house. Get them on bagged, and then you, the two of us usually put them away because we want them in the right places and, and everything. Yeah. We have our hiding spots for some of the stuff until uh, it's time for later in the week. And last time I let Silas do the pantry, we had like stacks and towers of things built in the pantry. Right. Yeah, he was like engineering my pantry. <laughs> and then, I don't know, you're right though. I'm like, even if you do it sometimes, you put it away, which is so thank which is so helpful. I'm so thankful. Yeah. Sometimes I'll be able to go to do one of my recipes and I'm like, where is the, I swear I bought the whatever. Yeah. yeah, It's all about efficiency. <laughs> all right. And Next then Sunday. Sundays, um, our Sabbath, right? And yeah. so we go to church and I'm kind of in my world helping with um, our volunteers and our kids and our middle school and 
um, other other things happening for the day or events at church and uh, you're doing I'm middle, doing the middle school, school ministry yeah and, and then, then we get home get some lunch and then it's really just relax and try to rest for yeah. the remainder of the day so we can get ready for the beginning of the week yeah we didn't really talk about how we spend time together though during the week um well let's see here we try to have a date night at least once a week Sometimes, it, depending on you know how the budget's going and yeah. timing, it might be every other week. But what we did this year for Christmas is we got each other a movie pass mm -hmm. uh, to where we go watch unlimited movies. So we love going to the movies, getting some popcorn and um, you know that kind of thing. So that's a quick, easy one. We actually did that last night. We did. That house. was really fun. Yeah, and the kids are old enough now where you know there's always a teenager home. We don't have to worry about uh, trying to. Uh, get babysitters and all that kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. that's a big, big help. Mm -hmm. yep. Sure is. And what I love is how we carve out time sometimes during the middle of the day. So because I work part time, sometimes mm -hmm. during the day I can come meet you for lunch or yep. something. Yeah. See, that's, that's part fun. of our budget secret too. So we maybe will have to talk about that later on. But we don't take these kids out to eat, okay? Like if we want to have some special time, we'll go. Right. Right? But then. Yeah, it's expensive taking everybody it out. It is. We might do it once every two months or something. Um, or at the last minute, we're coming home from church and we're like, you know what? Do you feel like cooking? No, I don't feel like doing anything. <laughs> but so. even that, sometimes we're like there, if we go to like a drive, we're like, okay, you can pick two items. We right. can really like narrow it for them. Right, exactly. Maybe order and all sorts of stuff. Um, so that's a little bit about us. We're really thankful for you to be tuning in today and for hanging out with us here on Blending Like Bosses. So however you find your family dynamic and family situation, uh, we think this stuff is gonna be helpful. Yeah. Um, think, there are things about our lives that we wish people would have told us, so we're just hoping to be able to pass that on to all of you. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, um, Michelle and I have grown and met, you know, just gone through what we've gone through um, we recognize that um, the precursor to blending is a really, really tough time frame. Mm -hmm. It's heartbreaking. It's something that you never thought you'd go through. Yeah. And um, there really is hope um, when you're in the middle of that. And so if you're watching this and you're not blending like bosses yet because you haven't, you haven't gotten there yet, um, there's hope in that God has a plan. Mm -hmm. and, but you have to do the work now. Um, that was the one thing we were talking about last night is if we didn't do the work, during the middle of all of that, we wouldn't have been ready for each other. Right. And so that's where I'm really thankful for the work that she's done mm -hmm. um, to be ready to have met me mm -hmm. and, and be uh, uh, the best wife and mom that I've ever um, you know seen. Um, so uh, yeah. So. Well, I think the same about you. Well, thank you. And it's a different story coming to the table, sitting across from someone, um, meeting them, getting to them, courting, dating, all of that who's put in just as much work as you have. Right. And I just think that God rewards that. Right. Um, and that that's one way that you can steward your pain is to really work through that. Because here's the deal, at the end of the day, we are shepherding these kids through very similar emotions that we've had to go through, right. like through pain. And so, yeah, we're talking about details and like what our life looks like and it's crazy and it's busy and it's fun. Um, yeah. But, what you don't see is all of the shepherding and the, the disciplining and the nurturing and the correcting, you know, that goes into that and helping to get at those heart attitudes and making sure that, um, that we're helping them work through. Right. So the episode today really is about kind of, you know, um, introducing us to you. Mm -hmm. And, um, as we go through these next several episodes, um, all the things that we've learned along mm -hmm. the way, and you know how we can um, be better parents through this, um, you know, uh, better spouses. I mean, all of it. Um, so it's uh, it is so neat and so important. And as we were looking at resources, we just didn't find a lot out mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm really excited about this opportunity. Mm -hmm. So stick with us over the next several weeks. Um, Blended families don't come with instructions. So we mm -hmm. hope you'll stay connected with us, stay within our community, connect with us online. Um, we'd love to help you make a plan so you can blend like bosses. Too. Thank you so much for tuning in today to Blending Like Bosses. Now for today's big idea. In order for this to work, you have to be all in. Yeah. This doesn't just happen. It's not going to just be because you guys are now married, everything's going to work. It's not how it works. Um, you have to put the work in and because God really does have a plan for you and he has a plan for our hope 
and for a future. Yeah. And as part of that, I'd like to read just Jeremiah 29, 11, which says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope mm -hmm. and a future. Amen. That's so good. And I think of the verses leading up to that because um, Babylon had just invaded Jerusalem. They took the Jews out um, mm -hmm. and were in exile. So they were not in an ideal situation, right? So right. many of you are not in an ideal situation. It's not captivity. Although you might wake up one morning and be like, how did I sign up for this? How did this happen again? Um, but I just think that there's some interesting points leading up to that um, where, where, um, where Jeremiah says those things about God's thoughts towards us. So it was all part of God's plan for them to be there and not just be there, but to thrive there. So the, the preceding scriptures talk about how he wants them to plant and have gardens and marry and um, buy houses. These are all my paraphrasing here, but to really settle down in it, mm -hmm. not just to survive it, but to be there and to thrive in it. And I think that's important to note when you're talking about this big idea of being all in, it's not just, okay, well, we're going to get to the next season of life or we're just going to fake it till we make it. Like we have to be committed to being all in right. or it's not going to work. Um, and, and knowing that God has a plan and he will multiply our efforts mm -hmm. um, when we are committed to really being all in. Right. Stay you encouraged today. Yes, yeah. you can do this. Once upon a time, during our first family vacation after Michelle and I got married, we took a whole group to a lake house. And at that lake house, we had the benefit of having an indoor pool. After a long day of traveling, Michelle and I retired to our room to find ourselves woken up in the middle of the night around 2 o'clock in the morning. Bang! 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 We run to the door, what's going on? So the first thing I thought in my head was, Oh no, we have a pool, somebody got hurt, somebody's like drowning or something, right? Nope. Brayden comes running into our room. Dad, we got a problem. Dad, we got a problem. You got to come right now. So we get up. I'm like, you know, throw some clothes on, run outside. And the video that you're about to see will tell the rest of the story. Stop. I can't, I can't get out. Your butt is not that big. Bro, no, but my thighs are. <laughs> Oh my gosh, you stuck. I can't, I literally can't get out of here, dude. My middle. Huh? I, that's how I, dude, I tried to jump in and it got stuck. <laughs> what, are you gonna, are you gonna rescue your boy? Oh, bro. I told you you shouldn't have gotten dude, out. Dude, we need to follow all this. Okay, put your arms up and try to get it out I of the water. I tried to get it through it in the water. I tried to jump Hey, through. Chad, what's your predicament? Dude, get out of here, bro. Come on, dude. He's got him stuck in a tube. He's stuck in a tube. He's stuck in a tube. I need a knife. Wait, are you insta alive? I need a knife. I'm about to be. We got some fishing scissors. We got some. We got Dude, I'm some actually fish. stuck. Okay. Did you? You no. need to get wet so that it slides yeah, off. Yeah, need to be wet. It needs to be wet yeah, yeah. so that it slides yeah, off. Let's hold on. Yo, 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 yo. This dude is actually stuck in a tube. No, you're not. This dude is trying to push it down. Come on. Get wet down there. Now try to get it off. Okay. Push. Push it hard, bro. Dude, I'm having a kid, bro. You guys are having like no more. You guys are just watching. I need to. I already tried to. You can get it on. It's no worse than getting a ring stuck on your finger. I think you need to go this way. Yeah, you totally need to go up. I can't. Oh, no, no, no. Put your arms straight. That, that's how I try to get through it. Don't so let your dad get it off. Let try. If I tell you to stop, stop. Uh, okay, we can't. Come on. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Wasn't that funny? Oh, man, that was a great time. Oh. Hey, Dad. <laughs> hey, Chad. What's up, dude? Uh, not too much. I was just telling a funny story. What's that? <laughs> um, do you remember the time that... You got stuck in a tube? Oh, <laughs> yes, of course I do. When life gives you a tube, don't jump through it. <laughs> My man thought he could jump through the tube. I'm, a, I'm skinny, you know. Right? I thought it would work, but these these thighs, man, they're just... <laughs> the thighs! These thighs are just oh. succulent, man. <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, that is Channing, and we introduced you to him earlier. 
Blending is a lot of work, but it can be so much fun as you saw here. But this show will not support itself. We need you to partner with us in order to keep it going. And the way you can do that is you can go to BlendingLightBosses.com and you can get a shirt such as this, the Mom No 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 shirt, or we have things like this, which is Raising Legends. You can also raise a legend like this guy because that's what we're doing. We're, we want to raise legends uh, so that they take on the future of our families.